My dear brothers, Saul, Nico, Walter, and Evan Dolph, when we were deliberating about your ordination to the priesthood, so many questions were thrown at the table. How were they as students? How were their grades? Are they good with human relations? Are they good in public speaking? Are they on time for the prayers? Can they relate with the other seminarians well? How are they when they play basketball? How are they with the BECs? How are they? What are the best qualities that will qualify them for the priesthood? And then it dawned on me, all our questions were about your strengths. I think we need to ask the question, what are your weaknesses? And are you weak enough to become priests? You need to be weak in order to be priests. Because sometimes our own strengths become obstacles for the grace of God to be shown in our lives. Are you weak enough so that the power of Christ can truly shine through you? Because if you are too intelligent, if you are very good with public relations, buti na lang you are not so good looking, then you are not an obstacle for us to be reminded of the beauty of God. But we are not looking for supermen. We are not looking for super seminarians. We looked for weak seminarians in whom the power, the strength of God can truly shine. You were called when you were weak. You were called when you were ugliest. You were called when you were at your worst. You were called when you were at your lowest. And this morning, do not dare to boast because you were called because of your weaknesses. That those weaknesses made you even more lovable before the Lord where sin abounds, where weakness abounds, grace abounds all the more. Are you weak enough to be priests? Are you weak enough to rely solely on the grace of God? Are you weak enough to depend only on the mercy of God? We need you to acknowledge your weakness. Because all your strengths, all your high grades, all the good things people say about you, all of that are gifts from the Lord. Your weakness, your weakness is totally yours. And your weakness is your gift to the Lord. And then, we went further by asking, Are they holy? Are they pious? Are they men of integrity? How is their character? How are they when no one is watching? Are they men of character? Are they men of integrity? In other words, is there no discrepancy between their public life and their private life? Is there no discrepancy between how they are alone and how they are in community. That is integrity. That is wholeness. But then, I gave up asking if you are holy and you are whole. I gave up asking if you are men of integrity and men of character. Because, brothers, we are not looking for angels. We are looking for men who can be priests. And therefore, my second question to ask is, is he broken enough 
to be a priest? Does he carry in his life enough brokenness so that God can make him whole? Because if there is not enough brokenness, there is not enough participation in the passion, in the dying of the Lord. We need you to be broken. And seminary formation is an exercise, is a formation in breaking and breaking and breaking until you are crushed. And when you are crushed, God will put you back this time into a beautiful mosaic so that you can become life givers for others. Today, you are going to break bread for the first time. Be careful with the breaking of the bread because you're breaking the body of the Lord. And if you break the body of the Lord, you also promise the Lord, Lord, break me. I give you permission to break my body. Brothers, sometimes that breaking can come from our own foolishness, from the stupidity of sin, for playing with fire, for waltzing with temptations, saying, Kaya ko to. No, don't dare. You will hurt yourself, you will hurt the church. Brothers, I need to warn you, sometimes that breaking of your heart can come from me. I might hurt you or from your brother priests they might hurt you but when you are hurt by your brothers when you are hurt by your archbishop consider it as a breaking so that you may be finer and finer so that more and more you can become life givers but most of all that breaking can come from the Lord do not run away. Do not shield yourself from it. Because the breaking that comes from the Lord can only make you holier priests. There is no holiness without breaking. There is no holiness without a willingness to be broken like the body of the Lord. If they crucify you, say thank you for giving you an opportunity to die like the Lord. If they gossip about you, if they ignore you, if they take you for granted, if they, calumni if they calumniate you, whisper a prayer of thanksgiving because when they break you, you share in the breaking of the body of the Lord and that is your path to holiness. Are you weak enough to be priests? And have you been broken enough to receive ordination this morning. And then we went on. With our times, we priests are threatened with so many things. In the past one year, three priests have been shot. And bishops have been ordered to be killed and shot. Walang silbi, barilin. Your faith is being shaken. You are now priests of a hypocritical church. And according to them, 90% homosexuals. And then the question was asked, are they brave enough to hurdle the storm? Are they brave enough to defend the faith? Or are they afraid? Are they cowards? We were looking for brave men. We are looking for courageous men to stand up for the faith, to be martyrs for 2018, 2019, and beyond. But then, I ask myself, is it only bravery that we need? Is it only courage that we need? Is it only fear that we have to fight? My third question, my dear brothers, is, are you afraid enough to be a good priest? 
Yes. The question is correct. Are you afraid enough so that you can be good priests? You must be courageous against error, but you must be afraid of sin. You must be brave to stand up for the Lord, but you must be a coward to be separated from Him. In other words, in the priesthood, there is no such a thing as no fear. You must be afraid. You must be sufficiently afraid. You must be afraid of hypocrisy. You must be afraid of celebrating the Mass in sacrilege. You must be afraid of lying. You must be afraid of lust. You must be afraid of abusing your sexuality. You must be afraid of cheating money from the church. You must be afraid of stealing money from the people. You must be afraid of comfort. You must be afraid of convenience because all of these distract you from your real vocation. You're going to receive a lot of money. You're going to receive a lot of food. You're going to receive a lot of clapping. But be afraid to be celebrities. Be afraid of sin. Be afraid of looking for applause from people. Look for the smile of the Lord. Search, the, search for the smile of the Lord in everything that you do. Be afraid to lose Him. Because when you lose Him, even if they call you Father, you are lost. They can still call you Father Evan Dolph, Father Voltaire, Father Nico, Father Sol. But if you have lost the Lord in your life, you are lost. Every day at Holy Communion, the silent prayer before the Mass, before receiving Communion, we say to the Lord, Lord, never allow me to be separated from you. Be afraid of that. Do not be afraid of death. Do not be afraid of sickness and old age. Be afraid only to be separated from the Lord. Are you weak enough to be priests? Are you broken enough to be priests? Are you afraid enough to be priests? My dear sons, my dear brothers, how I wish I can promise you a life that is easy and always peaceful. How I wish I can promise you a life where no people will oppose you. A life of always a fulfilling ministry. But that would not be so. It cannot be. Because when God told you, come follow me, he actually meant, come and die with me. Every moment of your life from here on should be a daily dying. When you break the bread, say to the Lord, break me too. When you are confronted with your weakness, say to the Lord, Lord, I am weak. Strengthen me. When you are afraid to go on, say to the Lord, Lord, kaya natin ito. Do not ever allow me to be separated from you. Brothers, in a few minutes, you will be priests. And you will be priests for eternity. God knows your weakness. God knows that you have been broken. God knows your fears. God knows you more than you know yourself. And the beauty of it all is, even if God knows you inside and out, He still calls you, Come, my beloved. 
follow me. May the same voice that you hear now be the same voice that will give meaning and purpose when life is difficult, when life is dark. Move on, rise up. The Lord calls you. Be faithful to Him against all odds.